Hi, welcome to the fifth session of SAP FISO training. Today's session is about accounts payable. In today's session, we will be covering the above points. First, overview on accounts payable. Define vendor account groups. Number ranges for vendor account groups. Define vendor tolerance. Creation of GL as reconciliation accounts. Vendor mass payment terms. Define cash discount for outgoing payments. Creation of vendor master records. And unit testing. Coming to the overview part, accounts payable module is the first sub ledger to FIGL used for managing vendors. It is an integral part of purchasing system, hence, most of the data in accounts payable module is obtained from material management module. Even it is integrated with treasury module and accounts receivable module as well. So AP module allows you to manage the most complex of AP transactions. With SAP's accounts payable system, a company can easily manage its payment to provide maximum cash discount and avail cash position on its liabilities. So in simple terms, accounts payable records and administers accounting data for all vendors. It delivers and invoices are managed according to vendors and payables are paid with payment programs. This is a very important part of FICO. Vendor account groups. Vendor account groups is the key concept in accounts payable. The account group is a classifying feature within the vendor master records. It controls the number ranges of vendor account and the vendor status in the vendor master records. Even vendor records, sorry, vendor groups allows you to have separate purposes and filled status for different types of vendors. For example, you could have a group of regular vendor or a group of domestic vendor and a group of one-time vendors. By separating these different types of vendors into different vendor groups, you can make different fields required, optional or suppressed for each of the groups. The first step in the configuration of vendor master data is to create your vendor groups. Once you have gathered all your requirements and know what the group should be, you are ready to go for the configurations. Now take a live example. When you do the implementation or configuration for any uh, for the AP module in any of the client, you first group your vendors in, the, uh, in that particular organization into different groups because you could be uh, providing services or selling goods to number of different groups like there could be a domestic group, there could be a retail vendor group or there could be a wholesale vendor group, there could be a service group as well, service vendor group. So in what way you want to manage your vendors, accordingly you make those groups. These groups are made because you could have a simple reports on the basis of that. In today's world, the management is more interested in knowing what is the total purchases from the domestic vendor, what is the purchases of services from the vendor, how much total retail purchases have been done or wholesale purchases have been done. So if you make these groups of vendors, you can easily have those reports from SAP system. Even at even you can segregate your vendors on the basis of those groups and it becomes easier to identify whether a particular vendor of yours is uh, is a service vendor or is a domestic vendor or is a is an import vendor what kind of a vendor he is that is why we always create vendor groups moving to the next as we already did in the GL a unique number range is assigned to each business partner record, master records. Business partner master records means the vendor master records. 
यूनिक नंबर इज टू एक्सेस देंडर मास्टर रिकॉर्ड अ नंबर रेंज कैन बी वैलिड फॉर मोर देन वन अकाउंट ग्रुप नंबर रेंज कुड बी एक्सटर्नली और इंटरनली If you remember in the last to last session, we did general ledger configuration. In that also we th we talked about account group. That account group refers to general ledger account group where we made the grouping of accounts like asset, liabilities, expenses, and revenues, and we defined a number range to them. A grouping of asset was done. a range was defined for liabilities revenues or expenses a range was defined that means that that particular series will be used for asset for liabilities or for respective expenses or revenues same way over here we we define a range to the group you could have you could use the same range for all the groups you could define different range to different groups as well it depends upon you which group what number you want to take it as you want to maintain the same number for all the groups or you want to have separate number ranges for different different vendor groups we prefer to put different number range for different vendor groups because it becomes easier to identify with that particular initials of the of the number range that that refers to a particular group which part of the group whether it is a part of a service vendor group or a one time vendor group or maybe a domestic vendor group whichever it may be and that particular range is defined to the number vendor account groups on the basis of which whenever you create any vendor master that number is assigned as an automatic vendor master number by the system now number range could be externally or internally it depends upon you whether you want to go internally or externally but as a standard practice one should go with the stand with the internally defined number ranges if you go for externally you have to maintain those external codes somewhere within in your excel and later on when you create the next vendor you you have to go and cross check what was the last uh, you have put up as a number range as a vendor code so defining internally so that the system could easily identify and generate automatic number is preferred just like an example you can see these are the account groups with you you could have these different number uh, different groups of vendors it could be a material vendor who supplies you raw material semi finished goods to you you can assign that particular uh, material group or raw material vendor group as well you can say a different number range could be assigned to them even there are two number range over here in material vendor because you may have two different groups like you could have one as a raw material vendor group you could have a different one as semi finished material vendor group so it's up to you whether you want to classify in those two part or you just want to have it as material vendor and accordingly you can have the number range and later on we assign this number range to the group so that that linking can be done and system could easily identify same way you can have a different number ranges for service vendors for finance vendors for one time vendor and for any other vendors like import vendor domestic vendor or anything as such so in this way you need to define your vendor groups and accordingly you define your number ranges to them so that it can generate its own code with that respective group and it will be easy for you to identifying in the business moving next to is to vendor tolerance group tolerance is basically defined is used for cash discount and differences in payment processing tolerance limits can be defined either as an absolute amount or as a percentage of amount received or paid as we did in the gl we defined tolerance for cash discount for payment differences even we defined um, tolerance as an absolute amount for lim as well as the percentage for differences in payment as well if you remember so these things restrict the system that you cannot give discount above than what has tolerance has been fixed or you cannot give more than more payment or less payment than the differences 
from the invoice and you can assign that particular absolute amount or a percentage to them and the system checks according to that and it take care of this of, of what the payment you are doing and all vendor tolerance account sorry vendor reconciliation account reconciliation accounts are managed implicitly using sub ledger function the reconciliation account ensures integration of vendor sub ledger into the general ledger more often reconciliation account are managed implicitly using sub ledger as said when you post transactions to a sub subsidiary ledger which is termed as a uh, sub ledger over here like vendor sub ledger the system automatically post the same data to the general ledger it automatically post to the general ledger because we assign that reconciliation account to the vendor sub ledger that is why it automatically post to the general ledger so you need to assign one reconciliation because the reason behind that is whatever financials you prepare financials are prepared on the basis of the ledgers so until you assign any ledger to the vendor sub ledger how the value from the vendor will flow to the ledger so the the logic is so as to flow the value to the general ledgers you need to assign that particular ledger to vendor account and that is what is termed as reconciliation account means the ledger which you assign in the vendor master is termed as reconciliation account as you can see over here there are different groups of these are different vendor groups which is in green part sorry in yellow part and these are different vendors now in the orange part these are termed as the reconciliation account you create reconciliation ledger account as domestic import vendor or other vendors raw material other than raw material or other vendors and you assign those ledgers in these vendor masters on the green part if you want to flow the values of vendor 1 in domestic vendors then you need to assign the domestic vendor reconciliation ledger to vendor 1 master data same way if you want to get the values posted to import vendor then you need to assign the import vendor reconciliation ledger to the vendor 2 and accordingly the system picks the values and post it to the ledger accounts payment terms key for defining payment terms composed of cash discount percentages and payment periods payment term is used in sales orders purchase orders and invoices terms of payment provide information for cash management payment transactions now moving on more on it payment term is used basically to define to know or the system will let you know which of the invoices are due for payment first second if you make an early payment how much cash discount will you be receiving so when we create a payment term we define how much due date or how much the term of payment will be so that the payment could be processed accordingly so the system automatically let you know when the payment is due and if you make any payment before the due date the system will also let you know the cash discount if you have maintained the cash discount percentages and time period on it so payment term basically calculate your cash discounts and it let you know the payment periods when the payment for the vendor is due for the invoices defining cash discount for outgoing payments here we define the account number for cash discount received account the system post the cash discount amount to these accounts when clearing open items in the vendors now when you make payments to any of the vendor invoices at times you get cash discount when you make early payments 
so the cash discount will obviously go to certain ledger account so that that ledger will take the values to the income statement so that ledger account is assigned over here as a customization part and that is what we will be looking in when we will be doing the configurations in SAP creation of vendor master records vendor master is a subsidiary ledger of sundry creditors vendor master controls how business transactions are recorded and processed by the system two ways to create vendor master data in SAP sundry creditors is a reconciliation ledger under current liabilities and this is this reconciliation account that is sundry creditor which we assign in the vendor master these sundry creditors can also uh, be segregated means a number of reconciliation account could be prepared on the basis of the different groups so that you could have reports of sundry creditor group wise like sundry creditor have got different kind of a creditor as already discussed vendor groups vendor account groups so this is more all of more related to that part where sundry creditor can be categorized or a reconciliation account for sundry creditor can be differentiated on the basis of domestic vendor group service vendor group material vendor group and all so we create different reconciliation account and we assign different reconciliation account to the different vendor groups so that the values can be easily checked for each of the groups now this is what we will be doing in the configuration part will be first defining the account groups then the number range for the vendor masters assigning number range to vendor account groups define vendor tolerance creation of GLS reconciliation account maintain document number range then we will be creating the payment terms however payment terms there are certain payment term as a standard but we will be creating a new one and we'll see how it works defining cash discount for outgoing payment then creating the vendor master records and then we'll look after to the unit testing part so first is let's move on to SAP system how these things can be done in SAP so let's move on to the SAP system now first we'll be taking up is the defining the vendor account group and for vendor account group the path is as under first you need to go to the financial accounting then accounts receivable and payable then to vendor account now we will be first let's move on over here as you know SPRO is the transaction code which you have to run first enter then you have to go to SAP reference IMG click on it then we need to now we are in FI part so we'll go to financial accounting new expand now we are working on accounts payable and accounts payable in this part account receivable and payable part we'll be expanding this further so now right now we are working under accounts vendor accounts so we'll open the vendor accounts part we'll expand the vendor accounts and now we'll go to the master data as in the tab in the ppt master data then the preparation for master data now we'll be going over here preparation for creating vendor master record as you can see preparation for creating vendor master record and then the defining vendor groups so now again expanding this part as we expanded now you can see over here define vendor groups with the screen layout vendor now over here we create the vendor groups so for that you need to click on this particular icon that is to execute system is slightly slow let's check um, it should not take so long
so you can see the heading change view vendor account group overview you can see over here that there are options of new entries copy delete now over here if you want any group to be deleted you can select that group from over here and you can even delete that if you want to copy you can copy that now let's come up over here you can see different groups are already there created by people uh, who have done the practice over here in it now you can see there are good supplier there are plant vendor there are special vendors again in below there are vendor distribution center if you will further go downside you will find different further vendors groups as well so if you go below let's see the employee vendors are there so there are a lot of different vendor groups which people have already created like uh, one time vendor domestic vendor is again there vendors training is also there so now what we will be creating over here would be that let's suppose in industries there are different kind of a vendor there are vendors who give you services for different part like IT services or any other services for that matter so you have got one as a as a service vendor and there could be different vendor from whom you purchase materials and all so there could be a material vendor then again you purchase uh, remaining other things then there could be a different vendor as well so suppose for example I am taking services and I need to create a service vendor group for them so I will go over here in it and will create a service vendor group over here so I can go to this new entries I can name it over here the group as something as I was to suppose I name it as S V E N or you can name it as S E R V which refer to service so it can be easily identified from the first four initials so we can write it over here service vendor group group so you can see this now once you name it you can even go to these fields as well these you can see over here these are field status and in in the basic setting we discussed about field status that field status basically um, gives you the facility of making any field as required operation uh, optional or suppressed so suppose when you go to this general data tab there are different things like address communication um, control payment transactions contact person suppose you go to contact person in contact person there is nothing else just optional entries or contact person if you want the contract person as a required entry that means that you must need to fill the contact person in the vendor master when you will create for service vendor group so for every different vendor group you could have different field status as required optional display or or suppressed so let's move on back and do something else as a mandatory part let's take address you can see over here everything is optional over here but I think I need few things as a as a mandatory part for example I need this name one as a required part that means I need to fill this name one always next you can have as okay you can even have your search term as as required field what does this means that this means that when we will be creating vendor master these two fields you have to fill anyhow because these have become mandatory so selecting these two and go to the save option and save it that means any service vendor any ven service vendor means any vendor which is a part of service vendor group they need to fill those two things over here in the this that is gen that is address one and search term now in the same way if you go back even there is a communication address if you want the communication to be mandatorily filled 
then even you can make that communication as a mandatory option over here so if you want any language to be made mandatory you can select over here as language is mandatory if you want the mobile telephone number to be made mandatory you can select that required field over here and you can go to the save option so that will become mandatory over here otherwise it is an optional you fill it or not the system will allow you to proceed so that is a part that is a, an important part that a field status is all about now same way this is the general group same way you can go to the company code data in company code data you can fill these different parts so you can double click on them again for account group now every master data must have an a, a reconciliation account because if doesn't have the reconciliation account that means it will not be able to take the values to the ledger and if it doesn't flows to the ledger that means your your financials cannot be prepared so what we do over here is we put reconciliation account as mandatory field that means whenever you create any vendor for that matter in service vendor group it will ask you to fill the reconciliation account same way you can fill other things as a mandatory as well but in in general we always make this reconciliation account as mandatory rest is up to the client what they need as a mandatory and what they not so we can go to the save option and we save it same way you can you can work for the other options in the purchasing data as well so moving back we have created our service vendor group going back so you can see over here s e r v serve means service vendor group has been created for me so once this service vendor group is created now we will be creating the number range for vendor master so you created the group now a group will be assigned to a range and that range will be used for creating vendor masters so from that range a code will be generated every time a new vendor will be created so we'll be assigning a, a number range to that particular vendors group that is like we just created the service vendor group so i will be assigning a range to the service vendor group and whenever we will create any vendor in service vendor group automatically that number range will be uh, assigned as a code to the vendor account so let's move back and you can see over here now that on the below part there is an option of create number range for vendor account as you can see over here so by this we create the number range and that number range work as a vendor code for the vendors created in sap so let's click on it execute now you can see with this display this is a display option which will only display you what is already there in the system so you can see there are already number of number ranges are already defined so you always need to see that this serial number should not be used again because duplicacy of serial number or duplicacy of these ranges are not allowed so suppose this six is already been used so i will be using a seven seventh serial number as a serial number part and will be assigning certain range to it so let's move up over back because it is, this is in the display mode i would be going to the this particular as a change interval intervals option click on this now i moved over here and whenever you move over here you can see this plus interval so to insert any interval to add any interval in this you need to insert this interval tab over here so clicking over here you will see the pop up will come to you now you must know that the number the number which is coming over here should not be repeated over here if i repeat suppose over here 01 is there if i repeat the 01 over here the system will not allow you you can see interval already available because 01 is already there so you need to take something which is not there in the system so as we already checked 06 is already there but 07 is not there in the system so we'll be taking one as 07 now what number range shall i give from this to this so that is up to you whatever number range you wish to give suppose for example i give it as 4 40000 40000 I want my 
vendor to be created with these codes so I just plus this now interval overlap there are certain interval which has already been there in the system so you can see this 0 1 which is coming over here already include this 4000 to 40999 so what I would be doing let's I just added one more zero to it and I put it over here as okay so I put this over here as this now let me add does it allow so it allowed me to add it because the number range was not there and it allowed me to take it this to this number so this number which I just filled it over as 40 million to 40 million 9999 this is what the code which will be generated for the vendors which we will create later on so this is what I have created and I can save this from over here so must remember that 07 is the number range which I have created and I need to uh, use it so just saved it now we've created the number range for it there are alternative uh, transaction code as well if you directly want to use it to else the path is there moving next is assigning the number range to the vendor account group now assigning the number range to the vendor account group means that this range which I just created will be assigned to the service vendor group so whenever a vendor will be created under service vendor group the, the code generated to the vendor will be with 40 million 40 million 1, 40 million 2, 40 million 3 that particular sequence system will be generating automatically so let's move on to assign this the very next row you can see assign number range to vendor account groups so you can go to this execute part and in this you can search your own service vendor if you don't know you can even go to this position if you remember the vendor group SERV so we can enter on it and you can see the service vendor group comes up over here and if you want your number range then you can even go to this selects option over here selection option and you can create your assign your number range by this so we created the seventh we assigned it over here and you can save it so this is how a vendor group is created then a range is created and that range is assigned to that particular group even if you want you can have a different group created as well later on and if you want this number 07 to be used with that group as well you can assign it just like below you can see this vendor forwarding agent and this vendors are using the same range double x double x double x so you can have you can use the same range with multiple vendor groups or if you want you can have separate number ranges for all these separate vendor groups so it's up to you how you want to take it in the SAP system moving back now the next configuration is defining vendor tolerance group so for vendor tolerance group we will be going to business transaction open item clearing then clearing differences so now we can go to close the vendor master now we'll be going to this business transaction in business transaction we need to go to open item clearing so open item clearing is here and then we will be going next to clearing differences so there is clearing differences and in clearing differences you can see define tolerance for customers and vendors so that is what this is one of the option or the second option is OBA3 this is the transaction code if you want to go to that so going to it defining tolerance basically if you want to read further you can go to this IMG activity document it will even explain you what does this is all about 
so this is how you can go for it in this activity you define the tolerance for customer and vendors the tolerance are used for dealing with payment differences and residual item that may arise when the payment clearing is carried out for each tolerance group specify the following and all those you can go through it and you can have a look at it so if you need the details to need you can go to this text and you can read it from over here the document part of it so now moving up to this explore option now I need to create my own tolerance for my own company code so I need to go to new I went to new entries now over here I will be putting up my company code 1200 moving next tolerance group if you want to assign tolerance group to a particular users then you can create tolerance groups you can have n number of different tolerance groups because different tolerance groups will have different limits and all those limits will vary to the user IDs so as you want you can assign those tolerance groups now moving over here to the below part you can see permitting payment differences so how much payment differences do you allow on the on the upper side or on the lower side suppose I put uh, 100 or suppose 500 500 and I put over here as 5% and over here is 5% now payment differences basically means the difference between invoice and the payment you can maximum has a difference of of 500 in between the invoice and the payment you cannot have more than that difference so or you can have a percentage defined over here so you cannot uh, make a payment beyond to that beyond to the to the base amount or the percentage whichever is lower side so that is what the system will allow it to you and in the in the below part permitting payment differences for automatic write-up automatic write-up means the system will automatically post that difference to written of GL account so that is also we define over here as suppose 100 100 and over here if you wish you can put the percentage if you don't you can leave the percentage as well specification for posting residual item from payment differences this is not used as a standard practice so we'll be not discussing this so this is what you have to take care and you can test it later on when we'll be doing the unit testing part so you can save this part over here and your tolerance for vendor has been defined now once the tolerance have been defined now moving up to the next is creation of GL as reconciliation account so moving up to reconciliation account as already said reconciliation account when we post any transaction to a subsidiary ledger the system automatically post the same data to the general ledger more or less accounts payable is a sub ledger the reconciliation account is the GL account updated by AP transactions using this vendor account different vendors or vendor groups can update different reconciliation account or can have even the same reconcil reconciliation accounts as well so now we will be creating a vendor reconciliation account in this case and we'll see how this works so for this we have to go to the transaction code FS00 to create a GL or we can go with the path as well so I'm going with the transaction code and you can follow the path to create this GL master so now going up over here this is FS00 now in this case now suppose I'm creating a vendor reconciliation account means a vendor account vendor GL uh, and a vendor GL must be a current liability so now I need to have a current liability number over here which GL should be created so what number can I have for that I need to go to OBD4 in OBD4 I will check for my liability sites you can see the chart of account is 1000 and in this the liability grouping is from 2 to 299999 so I will be have to take the series of 2 to create a 
vendor account. So now let's check first which are the liabilities which are already created in the system with the series 2. So for the series 2 in it you can see with 2 a loan account is already existing that means the second liability which I can create will be 200001 for vendors. So now moving over here 200001 you have to put it the number for the next to be created and then you have to go to this new click on new part so it will give you the options to create a new one now over here you need to select your account group as you can see in obd4 this is the account group and your account group for uh, vendor account that is a part of current liabilities liability so you have to select the group as liability over here so I would be selecting my group as liability. Now a liability is a part of balance sheet. So I have to se select the radio button balance sheet part and then you can write the text. Suppose the vendor which I am creating is a domestic vendor. So I can write it over here as domestic vendor. The same thing you will be putting up on the below side. Account. So now this is the first screen that is the description where we select the account group then whether that group represents to the balance sheet or profit and loss account you have to select and then you have to put the description over here. Now we'll be moving up to the next that is the control data. Now moving to the control data in this you have to fill the text category. So suppose the text category I take is for all that is the star so that all the text codes will be applicable on this. So I took the star if any of the text codes will be taken the system will allow for this particular ledger and you have to select this posting without text as well. So suppose any transaction there is no text code even then the system will allow you to take the transactions. Now as already said this ledger which we are creating is a reconciliation ledger for vendors. So that is why at this tab reconciliation account for account type you need to select which reconciliation part this will be so I am this is a part of a vendor so I have to select the vendor reconciliation so that whenever any transactions will take place in the vendor account that particular transaction will automatically get float in this ledger as well so that is what you need to take it as and over here you have to select the line item display whenever you select any reconciliation account over here that means it will also consist the open item management itself so you cannot click or you cannot take this open item management when you have already taken any of the reconciliation over here. So we just have to take the line item display so that whenever a transaction will take place that transaction will reflect you in the reports. So this is what you have to take in this particular part. Now moving up to the next is create bank and interest. Clicking on it. Now in this we have to select the filled status groups. So whenever you do different nature of transactions you have got different filled status groups for example if we do F4 with the key on the keyboard you will see a list of filled status groups will be reflected in this so in this case now what we need to take is we are doing transactions related to reconciliation account so we need to have a reconciliation account over here so for creating a ledger for reconciliation purposes we need to select the G067 for reconciliation accounts so that is what you need to take over here so this this groups will vary as per the different nature of ledgers you will be operating and accordingly it will keep on varying so we'll see this as we move to the other sub modules in the FI part so this is what you need to select and when you save this over here this will allow you to create your ledger so you can see this enter sort in this now you may make it okay there should not be any red error over here otherwise everything is all right so selecting it okay your ledger will be created so this is how you need to create your own reconciliation vendor reconciliation GL account a bit slow so you can see the data is saved the data is saved means your ledger is created so the same ledger now if you go back
and I can again go to this and this will allow me to see my own put the GL number over here and then put enter it will show you the detail which has been created so this is what basically is display part so once a ledger is already created whenever you will see in this it is that will be shown in the display options so you can go to control data whatever we have filled is reflected you can go to create bank and interest that is reflected then again now there are certain things which you should know like over here you can go to this information part in information you can see that when was this particular ledger created and who created this ledger and if is in this particular ledger if any changes will take place with this change document you can even check those changes so right now we have just created there is no changes at all so that is it all about so we have created the reconciliation account over here once we have created reconciliation account now we will be moving to the next that is maintaining the document number range so if you remember in accounting we maintain the document number range as 01 now same way we will be maintaining number range over here so they are basically two type of transactions majorly which take place in the case of vendors one is booking the vendor invoice and second is payment to the vendor so now we'll be looking after like OBA7 in this you can see that there are basically two types of document type which are used and they all start with K because we are dealing with vendor vendor you already we discussed that account key for vendor is K so for K there are only two things which take place that is one is vendor invoice another is vendor key vendor payment so for vendor invoice you can see double clicking on it you can see that there is a 19 number range is already there and if you go back and if you see for payment there is a 15 as a document number number range is there now what does this means this means that this is the serial number of document number this is by standard so what we need to do is we need to create two number ranges document number range which has to be defined one is for 19 and one is for 15 19 is for document number range for vendor invoices that is KR and 15 is for vendor payment that is KZ so to create the number range we need to go to FBN1 So going to FBN1 as in the screen FBN1 as we already did in the ledger general ledgers accounting that we created the document number same way we will be creating the document number over here. So you need to fill the company code over here 1200. Now we will be creating two document number range that will be two document number in serial number that is as we seen in the vendor document type that is KR and KZ KR document number series was 19 and for vendor payment that was 15 so we'll be creating these two over here now we'll go to this interval to create I need to create two that is one is for 19 and one is for 15 now we'll go to 19 we need to put now keep things over here how these number ranges work 19 is the serial number which I have put up for vendor invoice as it was mentioned in KR now you need to put the year over here for which fiscal year you want right now the fiscal year which is which is running around is 2014 so if if your fiscal year is is something else you need to put that fiscal year because the number range accounting document number range changes every year every year you have to create new number ranges or you can copy the existing previous year number ranges to the new year so we'll be taking up 2014 as a fiscal year and now i will be defining what will be the number range over here so suppose the number range over here is this i will be just taking the same and i will be just making certain changes i want my vendor invoice to be booked is with 19 so that it will be easier for me to understand so 19 is the serial number for invoice also I am putting the same thing 19 so 19 
zero nine nine nine. I can put it over here, and now I have defined this to this, and I can plus it. So plus it will add on to it. In the same way, you can go to this plus again, and you can create the serial number or the document number range for fifteen now. So for fifteen, you have to put away fifteen. You have to put the fiscal year two zero one four. Now you can put a number range. It depends upon you how and what number range you want to have. You can have accordingly. You can do the working of that. So now I would be taking it as fifteen. Insert. Now the, the, these are the two which I have entered, and I can now go to the save option, and your your document number range will be created. Now add on. Okay, continue. So your number range for 15 and 19 is created. Now do you remember this 15 serial number is for vendor payment that is KZ document type, and 19 is for vendor invoice that is KR. So your number range is over. and this is what will give you the number accounting document number a unique accounting document number for vendor invoice and for vendor payment as well now moving to the next is payment terms we discussed earlier payment term is basically used for determining the due date of the invoice and if in case the due, the payment is made before the due date what will be the cash discount what will be the rebate in that so that is what has been calculated in this case so for creating payment term by sap side there are certain payment term that are as standard if you want to create your own payment term you can have your own payment term created as well how this works let's see so we can see the payment term now that the transaction for that is obb8 so now we can go to the sap system and we can run slash n to exit the screen and obb8 to enter the payment term screen so obb8 now in obb8 you can see these are the standard payment terms which are provided by the sap itself if you need to use it you can use these all now as you can see the payment term 0001 that is for immediate payment that means you don't want to hold for any due date you just punch in the invoice and later on you can make the payment immediately after that so in that case you can use this payment term there is another payment term 0002 that is for if the payment is 30 days 2% discount will be there if you make the payment within 14 days it there is a discount of 3% so that that is the terms of payment with the vendor which varies so if you make the payment within 14 days you get the discount of 3% if you make the payment within 30 days the you can you get the discount of 2% by the vendor as per the agreement and if you make it within 40 days then only the net amount is to be paid there is no discount in that so there could be different number of terms which are set with the vendors as you can see below again there is a different term again in this case 14 days 2% 30 days 1.5% and 45 days there is nothing so there there could be different payment terms if you go page down there could be number of other payment terms as well allowed over there so you need to uh, see which you want to use and if case there is a different payment term which is not applicable as per the standard in this screen you can go to this new entries and you can create your own payment terms as well so suppose we we check just for one of any one of them suppose we check for 0002 now where you can see that we need to fill the code over here and then you need to put the description what the payment term description will be now this payment term will be applicable for customer or vendor if it is applicable for both you have to tick both of them if you want this payment term to be applicable only for vendor you have to tick only vendor over here now this payment term will be calculated on the basis of which date will it be a posting date or entry date or the payment date sorry document date document date basically means the invoice date invoice date which is written on the invoice of the vendor posting date means the date on which you are punching the invoice so an entry date means the actual date on which the document were posted by the user in the system so these are three different dates now in normal cases mostly the document date is taken to calculate the due date or the payment terms by the by the any any of the clients or any of the users 
So now coming up over here, if you know that the terms of payment are different and there are discounts in it, in that case, you go on this particular part and you fill those areas. So if there is a discount of 3%, if it is done less than 14 days, then you fill 3% 14 days. And if there is 2% discount within 30 days payment is done, then you fill it this. And if the next is 3, 45, so the maximum you can have the percentage discount is for two line items, two times, and the third will be the final on which the final payment need to be done. So this is up to you how you uh, want to take it the system with. And then once you configure this, you can save it and the payment term will be created. So in this way, you can create your own payment terms or even you can use the existing payment terms if it uh, it is applicable for that particular vendor so this is how it works now moving up to the next is your defining cash discount for outgoing payments now moving to this particular case path over here we define a, 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 a discount account which will be taken up as a, a, a cash discount received uh, while making outgoing payments so let's see how it can be done in the system so we'll be going to the SPRO screen slash and SPRO I am the screen financial accounting accounts payable so let's move to the financial accounting part accounts receivable and payable business transactions outgoing payment so in outgoing payment now is outgoing payment global setting so outgoing payment global setting now over here you can see the define account for cash discount taken so over here you need to go and explore this and this the chart of account has to be entered enter then over here you can see this is the screen that is the transaction for cash discount received is SKE and the transaction code for this is OBXU if you want to have the transaction code so over here in this case you need to define the account over here so clicking on this accounts where a GL account can be assigned to have the discount so now in this case we need to select this text code and then we need to click on this okay save the rule first so in this case if you save it first and then you can see the option of putting a GL account has arrived over here so in this case we we assign the cash discount received GL in this case so as of now if you go for F4 key in the keyboard let's see whether I have, I have created any any ledger for cash discount received or not so in this case as of now I have not created any cash discount received ledger as of now you can see there is no cash discount received ledger in this so what I will be doing now is first I will be creating a cash discount received ledger and then I will be assigning that over here so for that I will be going to a new session in this over here clicking on this and then now we will be creating a new ledger account over here with FS00 now again I have to see that again cash discount received is a part of which group so I need to check the group it's basically a part of income so income is of with 3 lakh 30000 so I have to explore from over here whether there is any any ledger open with 3 series or not so in case we check there is only sales account over here so we can now create 300001 so I will be creating 300001 under the head under the group income income is a part of profit and loss account and this I write it over here cash discount are received same I will be filling up over here cash this 
account received account now moving up to the next I will be clicking over here star and posting this and clicking on to the line item display no open item mind it open item management is not relevant for profit and loss account related GL so moving to the next now over here we will be selecting G001 and save it and your ledger will be created over here now so ok to this and your ledger 300001 is created and in that case now if you go back over here now we can assign the ledger in this case that is cash discount received ledger so when you go to this search the ledger and you can see your ledger will be appearing over here so this is where your cash discount received is coming up double click on this this will be selected and now you can save this over here and your cash discount received settings have been done so this is how you have to do this same way your cash discount for outgoing payment has been successfully covered now the next is creation of vendor master records and after that we will be doing unit testing so this now we will be doing up in the next session and as of now it's over you can do this much with the new system we'll be carrying on to further to this in the next session thank you